This is CBS 47 Eyewitness News at 7 in high definition. Well, it is a new age of policing. Officers are trying to help those with living that are living with mental illness while keeping the community safe. But sometimes those confrontations can turn deadly. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning us in. I'm Ken Malloy. And I'm Catherine Herr. Over the last two years, Fresno Police Chief Jerry Dyer has made it clear de-escalation training is a major priority for his officers. And for the first time, he is providing an all-access look into how they practice de-escalation tactics. CBS 47's Justin Lum joins us live outside Fresno Police Headquarters. Justin, uh, do these tools work? Well, Ken, Catherine, Chief Dyer tells us de-escalation tactics have prepared his officers for many different situations involving those with mental illnesses. So he invited us to see for ourselves exactly how officers are learning these new techniques and the evolution of police work. There was one thing that stuck in my mind when the former chief, you may have remembered him, Ed Winchester. When he left the department, I asked him, as you're leaving, what is the one thing that you regret not being able to do? And his immediate comment was providing more mental health training to our officers. 17 years later, this training day is not one police officers of past generations may recognize. Over the course of five weeks, they won't touch a firearm or study defensive tactics. It was very apparent to me that I needed to do more with all of our officers in the department to give them the skill set and the tools that they needed to be able to resolve these confrontations more peacefully. For a total of 40 hours, officers receive crisis intervention training. I, I, I need help. I'm, I'm scared of it. Officers rehearse scenarios based on their own experiences. We have a clinician that can come out and talk to you. Here's the perspective of a veteran who refuses to take medication for his mental illness. Things can escalate quickly. See, look, 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 look. Oh, okay. oh, All right. sir, no, oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. These officers must remain calm and de-escalate a tense situation between father and son. Stop, stop. stop. Judas! It's okay. It's okay. Judas! It's all right. All right. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Okay. Sorry. That, that's, I'm sorry. That, that's, the kind yeah. of, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Okay. You know, that, that can't happen. For law enforcement, it's a true test of patience. On August 14th of 2018, police say 31-year-old Remigio Carino battled his own mental health crisis, standing in a field near almost elementary school, yelling and behaving erratically. The first officer noticed Carino spoke Spanish and began to talk to him. As backup arrived, police gave him about 30 yards of safe distance. That individual did have mental health challenges. It doesn't mean that that person wasn't any less of a threat to the officers, right? For nearly half an hour, the de-escalation process continued before Carino pulled out a hunting knife, then a gun. Police say the officers used both less lethal and lethal force simultaneously, fatally shooting Carino. So far in 2018, there have been six officer-involved shootings by Fresno police. That's half of what the number was five years ago. Over the last two years, the 11 combined officer-involved shootings are still under the 2013 total. Our officers handle around 1,100 calls a day in the city of Fresno. And when you multiply that out through 365 days a year, that's incredible. Dyer says Fresno PD has worked with the National Alliance on Mental Illness for the last two years. CIT training for about 300 officers, a new reality in policing. In all six of this year's officer-involved shootings, police say they faced armed suspects, but many situations are different, like the topic of suicide. I just don't want to be here anymore, and I'm mean? tired of being here. Being where? In this world. I think if we talk through this and get you to a place where you're comfortable going and talking it out. Simply talking. Fresno police did just that to convince this man not to jump off the ledge of a freeway sign on Highway 41. After hours of threatening to jump, officers talk him down. John Gliotta is the Fresno police auditor. He independently reviews the department and publishes a report made public every three months. Officers are trying to maintain calm where even though the suspect may try and escalate the situation, the officers aren't responding accordingly. They're responding in a way to de-escalate the situation. It's something that's not for everybody. It's got to be a calling. And for all of you that have answered that call, I just want to say thank you. Fresno's top cop will be the first to tell you this job is only getting tougher, and he wants his officers to evolve by embracing the techniques of crisis intervention. Would you say being a police officer is arguably the toughest job in America? I would say being a police officer today 
is, if not the toughest, one of the toughest jobs in America. When you look at all of the challenges that our officers are faced with, when they're having to deal with people that are emotionally charged, high on alcohol, have a mental health crisis going on, being able to make split-second decisions with limited facts, um, it's very challenging. And according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, law enforcement agencies with CIT programs in place have reported as much as an 80% decrease in officer injuries during mental health crisis situations. So when you look at the numbers and you talk to police officers themselves, they'll tell you these tools are working. Live at Fresno PD, Justin Lum, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. Boy, oh boy, Justin, what a great report. Well, and fascinating yeah. to see how how they go through that training. Yeah, so necessary. Mm -hmm. Great report. Uh,